Well, here we are with our Sunday School lesson for Sunday, May the 12th. And I will just say, as we begin our lesson today, as we begin our reflection, that it's been a challenging week for me. On May the 3rd, I had one of my very closest friends have a 71st birthday. And on May the 8th, I got a call that he had had a massive heart attack and had passed away. And that's never easy. It's never easy for any of us when we, when we lose somebody that's close to us. Chris was one of those people that we bonded 38 years ago when we first met. I was a, I was a banker, a new banker, had just moved to Charlotte. Chris was an attorney with a, with a large law firm and did a lot of work for the bank. And, and, and he, he was one of those guys that um, had the same work ethic that I've got. And I would get to my office at 7 o'clock in the morning, be at my desk, and I could call Chris at 7 o'clock in the morning and ask him questions and talk about something we were working on, some loan commitment or some new client or whatever. And uh, we, just, we just hit it off right away, and we became friends. We had a lot of, lot of memories, a lot of experiences. And he was one of those people to me, and I know that each of you have had people in your life that way, that was just somebody that you could trust, you could talk to, you shared things with that wouldn't go beyond the two of you. Uh, we both still are very active working. I mean, he, he worked every day. In fact, as I think back on, on his life and our time together, we talked just a couple of weeks ago about we need to get together. We just need to figure out in our work schedules how we can do that just so we can visit again. So anyway, it's been a challenging week, and, I, and, I, and I've been thinking about him. I've been thinking about him actually as it related to this, this Sunday school lesson. The um, lesson today is titled, Our Mission, and the background comes from Matthew 28, 16 through 20, and the purpose statement is to accept that the great commission Jesus gave to the eleven is also our work too. And, and we talk about that, we think about that, we reflect on that. I wanted to share just for a few minutes before we actually get into the lesson itself and just took, take a look at the Gospel writers. Each shared their own perspective as it related to their life, their times with Jesus. And I think that's interesting. I think it's interesting because there are certainly some that would say that the whole thing about the, the crucifixion, the, the, the death, time in the tomb, the resurrection after three days, the ascension, all of that was just fabricated by, by these 11 and the story just spread. But when we look at the Gospel writers, when we look at, at what's written, not everyone has the same perspective, and that's so true. It's, it's, it's true when you know somebody, and let me go back to my friend Chris. I've been talking to a few other close friends, and we, we did a lot of things together, and we were talking about different memories that we had, and we may remember the same event, but our reflection about our experience was a little bit different. And, and that's the way it is. That's the way it is when we reflect back. Because when we're with people that we care about, when we're with people that we're close to, they, they make us better. They, they make us feel better about themselves. They challenge us. They, they, they push us. And, and so when we reflect back on those times, our reflection is about our personal relationship and, and what those times were like. And that's what the Gospel writers were doing. When I uh, was in Wilmington, when we, we moved to Wilmington, uh, North Carolina a number of years ago, and we went to a church and um, went through the inquirer's class, and it was a, a mix of people. I can't remember how many now, 20 maybe, and uh, different age groups, and there wasn't really a Sunday school class that, that all of us could go to because of different age disparities. And so we said, well, let's start our own class, or at least get together and have a little devotional. And we did that for a few Sundays. And I said, we really need to have more of a Sunday school lesson. And so um, I agreed to, to lead that Sunday school lesson. And we called it the journey class, all agreeing that we were at different places in our faith journey, but we were all together on that journey. And the very first lesson that I did, I, I got one of the... The theologians, I used William Barclay and his um, study on the book of Matthew. And I picked Matthew because Matthew's perspective was to try to show the Jews that Jesus was the Messiah. 
that he was the one that the Old Testament writers talked about, that it was prophesied about, and it was Jesus. And I think that's important. Go back, if you have the time, if, if you want to take the time, and, and just read a book, pick up N.T. Wright, pick up Barclay, and, and, and follow through the book of Matthew, and you learn so much. Matthew just simply wanted to show that Jesus was the promised Messiah, and it's the only gospel that tells of the Magi, tells us of the Magi who were Gentiles, who came to see Jesus. Luke's gospel tells us an angel of the Lord told the shepherds where to find a baby. But Matthew says the Magi got no special announcement, but they followed a star. And as our lesson writer says, what a hint that the unexpected are welcome to journey and find Christ. So I'm going to read the lesson. I'm going to read it out of my Wesley Study Bible. And it comes from the end of Matthew 28, 16. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Jesus came near and spoke to them. I have received all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them, teaching all, to obey everything that I have commanded you. Look, I myself will be with you every day until the end of this present age. Now we know that passage. We've heard that passage before. We've talked about that passage. Jesus is saying, all power was given to me. I want you to go out and teach all, share with all the message. And I am looking to you to share that message. I think it's significant that Jesus took him to a mountaintop. Now, I've often said that I've never had a burning bush experience. I've never had a Damascus Road experience. But I can tell you, and I dare say you can say the same thing, that you have had some mountaintop experiences in your life. There have been times when, when I'm at a particular event, I'm, I'm, I'm with a weekend retreat or whatever it is, and I come back having this mountaintop feeling. That I have been to the mountaintop. I've seen things that I never expected to see before. And here I am on, on top of this mountain, and here's the world below. I've often said, and I think about when I used to fly, and I used to fly two, three times a week, there was something about sitting in that airplane seat. And that airplane, the, the airport was busy, there were people, it was hustle, there's bustle, there's stuff going on, you had to go through security, and, and people were frantic because afraid they're going to be late, or there were people getting off of planes, and they were wanting to hurry up and get to their transportation so they could get home or get to their business or whatever it was. But all of this was going on. But when you take off and you start to climb into the sky, all of a sudden, all of that disappears. It's still there, but you're above all of it. And you start looking, you start looking at, at mountains or the, or the coast. or your You look at the majesty of God's creation. And I think about that. So here they were on a mountaintop, and what a great place for them to be. Here we come to the end of the gospel story. Here we listen to the words of Jesus to his men. And think how important that is. Let me go back one more time because I can't get Chris off my mind. And I think about the last conversation that we had. And it was a conversation that many of you have had with people before who said, we need to get together. I shared that a few minutes ago. The last time that I had the opportunity to talk to my friend was, we really do need to get together. We're both busy, we've go, both got things going on, but we haven't, haven't gotten together in, in, in a couple of months. We really need to do that and not just talk on the phone. And so here's Jesus giving his disciples the last words that he's going to give them face to face. He assured them of his power. Surely nothing was outside the power of him who had died and conquered death. Now they were the servants of a master whose authority upon earth and in heaven was beyond all question. He gave them a commission, a commission, a command. He gave them a duty, a responsibility. He sent them out to the world to make all the world his disciples. The commission of Jesus is to win all men for himself. Think about that. Reflect on that. We've shared that before. The responsibility of those disciples was to share with everybody. And when I think about that, it was those 11 
that were told that. And those 11 went out after the ascension and filled with the Holy Spirit. They went out and they shared with other people. Just one or two or three. And then, then we read hundreds at a time because people were hungry for the message. They were hungry and they still are. And he promised them a presence. It must have been a staggering thing for 11 humble Galileans to be set forth to the conquest of the world. Even as they heard it, their hearts must have failed them. But no sooner was the command given than the promise followed. They were sent out as we are on the greatest task in history. But with them, there was the greatest presence in the world. Is there anything more important to us than that? And I think it's important too when we think about it that they doubted. I think it's important that Matthew specifically points out some doubt and some question. Do you really want us to do this? Can we do this? We're not capable of doing this. And I think again it reflects on the fact that, that it reflects on our humanity. These were real people. These were people like us who were hearing something that I don't think I can do it. Have you ever said that? Have you ever gone to, to Sunday school? Have you ever gone to church and somebody says, you need to go share your testimony. You need to go witness. And you go, I don't know if I can do that. I'm not equipped. I haven't read enough Bible passages. I haven't attended enough worship services. I haven't attended enough Sunday school lessons. I can't do that. I think I've probably shared before that the church that we attended in Wilmington became an officer of that church. And part of the process of becoming an officer, we had to go to several classes about our responsibility. And we were told that the next week... <laughs> we were going to have to come and share our testimony in front of everybody else. Now, I'll admit, that was one of those things that thought, I'm going to do what? <laughs> you're going to have to share your testimony. You're going to have to share your story, why you're here today. God brought us together for a reason. I've said often that while I've never had a burning bush or a Damascus Road experience, I've had many God incidents in my life. The people I've met, the people that I've had the opportunity to get to know, the people that I have shared with, the people that I have laughed with, that I've cried with. I say that about my Sunday school lesson. I believe that God brought me back to, to Judy's hometown in Cornelius to be where I am, to be doing what I'm doing. And, and, and if you look at your life, it's all pieced together with incidents, with people you've met, with opportunities that you've had. And they're all experiences that, that we reflect back on. And that's your testimony. It's your unique testimony, why you're here, why you love the Lord. I love the Lord because whatever that is. And so while we have doubts, it's good to have doubts. But we also need to know that it's okay. And it makes us more real to other people that we share with. You know, May the 12th is also... A special day of the year. It's a special day because it's Mother's Day and on Saturday afternoon I'm going to go visit with my mother. I've shared before that my mother has advancing Alzheimer's and we never know from one visit to the next what that visit's going to quite be like. But I have wonderful memories of the love of my mother and one of the organizations that I was in was Dee Malay. Some of you may be familiar with Dean Malay. It's a Masonic organization for young men. And when I was in high school, I had several of my buddies that, that when they started the Dean Malay chapter said, we're going to be Dean Malays. My dad was not a Mason, but we certainly knew a lot of people that were. And so I joined that organization. At the age of 17, I became the, the president of the local chapter. They call that title the Master Counselor. And one of the things that Dee Malay has is a tribute to motherhood. And I memorized that tribute to motherhood because it was something that we shared with our mothers at, at various ceremonies that we did. And it was, it was a wonderful thing. I was also asked during that period of time by a couple of churches to share the Dee Malay tribute to motherhood. Now, I'll admit that over the years, I haven't haven't thought about it much. I certainly haven't practiced it. I, I don't remember um, to be able to do it without reading it. But I wanted to share it today because I've been thinking about it. I've been thinking about it as I, as I think about going to visit my mother and I think about the way she would look when I would, when I would share that tribute to motherhood. 
I can see her. I can see her when I close my eyes today, sitting in, in a group of people. And I can see the smile on her face. And so I wanted to share it with you today as we finish up this Sunday School lesson. It is called the Demolay Tribute to Motherhood. And it goes, God thought to give the sweetest thing in his almighty power to earth, and deeply wondering what it should be one hour in fondest joy and love of heart, outweighing every other, he moved the gates of heaven apart and gave to earth a mother. Why? For save in heaven, there's not a name so sweet, so hallowed. Deep from the heart it leaps, it springs, softly hovers on the lips, and sings of love and happiness and joy. There's never a heartbeat out of time, never a nature out of rhyme with mother. The mother sending forth her child to meet with dares and strife, breathes through her tears, her hopes, her fears, for that loved one's future life. No cold adieu or farewell lives beneath her choking sighs, but the deepest story of anguish gives. God bless thee, son. Goodbye. So you see, there are many, many reasons why we love you, mothers dear, though today we're not repeating all we've told you through the years. But our ever-loving wishes and our thoughts so fond and true will be in our hearts for you always, just because, dears, you are you. For there's a well-worn path and it leads straight through the lanes of our hearts till it comes to you. And the vines of love and the flowers of cheer grow there all the seasons of the year. But on this day they bloom anew with the best of wishes all for you. So count your garden by the flowers and never by the leaves that fall. Count your days by golden hours and don't remember clouds at all. Count your night by stars, not shadows. Count your life with smiles, not tears. And on this day when you we honor, count your age by friends, not years. For God has not promised skies always blue, nor flower-strewn pathways all of our lives through. Nor has God promised sun without rain, joy without sorrow, or peace without pain. But God has promised strength for the day, rest for the laborer, light on the way. Grace for your trials and help from above, his unfailing sympathy, his undying love. So mothers, just for yourselves were these thoughts today for you and you only, dears. The hopes that are known in our hearts alone and the love that we're sending here. And just for yourselves in this loving wish that all that is fine and true may bless you as truly as we have been blessed by the gift of your love and you the Demolay tribute to motherhood. I give thanks to my mother. I give thanks to the woman that, that she was to me, the family that she raised. I give thanks to all mothers because they're special. They're special in all of our hearts. Will you pray with me, my friends? Our gracious Heavenly Father, we just give you thanks for today. We give you thanks for mothers. We give you thanks for the message of this, this, this lesson today. We do have a great responsibility, and all we have to do is go out and share it. Share it in our own words. Share it in our own ways. But share it. Share it with others. And as we share it, the message grows, and we will introduce other people to the wonder of your love. We ask as we go throughout this week that you continue to keep our eyes open to things you want us to see, our ears open to things you want us to hear, and our hearts overflowing with that love, that love that you have put in each and every one of us. And no matter how much we give away, you're going to give us more to give. In his name we pray. Amen. I love you, my friends, and I look forward to seeing you again soon.